Nanonood kami ng cinema may alas 6. Eh. <laughs> It's <laughs> beyond time na alas 5 to matapos. It be very brief. So, hindi nyo na kailangan kumawa ng computer ngayon. So, essentially, this is just a talk now. Okay, now that you've learned the basics, where do you go next? So, either you enter to a software development shop, or baka may mga sadyante pa dito who wanted to go through their thesis and wanted to use Serbian Rails as their framework to accomplish their thesis or something. So eventually, where do you go from here? Usually, <coughs> what I do whenever I do a talk, especially for the things uh, developers, I always start with uh, a sample program, a sample application. Okay, uh, simple introduction. I'm uh, see Richard Gonzalez. I'm I'm a Ruby and Rails developer for, I think, more than five years. So I started with Rails, I think Rails 1.2 or Rails 1.3 pa. Way back, walang ganito ang venue. There is, there's nobody to teach you what to do. Ang meron lang is the website, the forum, stock overflow, and keep doing your shit. That's it. Wala nang iba. Maswerte ka na may bawang book to use for your reference, but essentially it's not enough for you to, to, to get started reading. So, yeah, I've been, I've been a developer for more than a decade, so I started with assembly. Ewan ko kung alam nyo ba ang C++ or C, noong unang pasama. Turbo, Turbo Pascal, no that bullshit. Clipper, and hindi ako nagbibiro, nag-cobble sa pentate ako. So, I created applications for robotics, <coughs> tracking systems, then I realized ko na walang future sa, sa desktop development noon. So I started using PHP. Then after PHP, I decided na saan ba ako pupunta? Mga fresh graduate from college knows PHP. And me competing with them. Lugi ako kasi senior na ako eh. Me looking for a job, medyo may hirap. So, uh, I think five or six years ago, <coughs> one of my friends was working on a Java Enterprise uh, gig here in Manila told me that, dude, there's a new framework that's being used right now and it's doing some good efforts and making it mainstream. Why don't you try it? So, as a Bicol Pao, I've been using Ruby on Rails now. Then my first gig here in Manila was actually a QA. So I couldn't stand doing the QA shits. Tumalis ako, after three months, then jump into a web design job, did web design for a Rails group. We were, I guess, I don't know if we were the first Rails group na underground, but yeah, we did some porn sites and everything, so masaya din. <laughs> so after that, uh, I went back in and started coding with Rails. And, yeah. So, so yeah, that's a brief history. Para i-prove ko lang na makinig kayo sa akin. So the, the very first thing usually that I do whenever I, I, I discuss is the first thing you do is go go to the jump file. Okay, you can you can clone the Devcon um, uh, application in GitHub. Create a GitHub account now if you don't have a GitHub account. Clone it and study it from your desktop. Okay, the first thing that you need to do if you want to study. An application that's already running in production is to go to the job file and see what they use. So this is what I use for for an application in a alaga for this is for I think for, for almost two years. So this was still using. Uh, the old bootstrap, the, the old Twitter bootstrap. So this is, this is from Australia, and it's like a farm uh, trading stuff for uh, a trading uh, point for farmers in Australia. So this is the, the, the jail file. Okay, just a brief rundown. I'm using Ruby 1.9.3, so yung 2.0 is pangarap pa yan, soon bro. I'm using Rails 3.2.13. PG is for Postgre. SAS Rails, I'm using SAS. If you don't know SAS, I'm 
if you love CSS, this is also for designers. SAS is way better, I think. Because it, it, the, the lesser code, the lesser mistake. And if you're using SAS, that must make see you mga CSS files. No? I use select two for Rails, you know the beautiful select two stuff. If you don't know select two, you might as well start using it as well. And this is the assets, so you can group your, your gems. These are the asset, asset gems. We use Coffee for Rails, the Amplifier, SQL lagging para nakikita nyo SQL statements sa logs nyo. I use asset, <coughs> asset sync because I'm pushing the assets to AWS on CDN. Okay. So, wala siya, sa, wala siya sa Heroku. And I also use Turbo Sprockets. I think this is in Rails 4, but you can actually use it in Rails 3. So, for my development environment, I use Heroku. Uh, quiet assets para mamatay yung useless logs that you usually see. I use Sin for the rock server, and Solar for the search engine, and Mail Catcher is a big help if you're testing emails and you want to see it, uh, how it renders, okay? And for production, I use Unicorn. I think mandatory na ngayon na Unicorn sa Heroku. I use Airbrake for um, uh, notifications, Airbrake. Airbrake. Yeah, for error notifications, para makita niya. So we'll send you the error notifications to your email. And you ready RPM for um, some diagnostics and analysis. For test, uh, Kikumba Rails, Capybara, turn for pretty printed outputs. I use Redis and Rescue. I use Rescue Mailer for, so if you, if somebody registers on your website, and, kasi yung Mailer may, may counting oras pa yun. Okay, if you do it directly, may may nothing on us, but what you do is leverage with Rescue Mailer. All you need to do is add one line on your Mailer um, classes and uh, Rescue, Rescue Mailer will take care of it. So, jQuery Rails, Modernizer Rails, I use Sunspot Rails for the search engine, the progress bar for, uh, actually, hindi ko ginamit yan. Sunspot with kami para, sorry, with Kaminari. Uh, that's for the imagination with Sunspot search results. And Rock SSL Enforcer because I do have some um, active merchant integration. I use Hamel. I use Hamel for Rails. Um, I also use Formtastic Cocoon for nested, um, nested fields, client side validations and stuff. And the Everdubbing Ancestry for, for trees. Paperclip. Um, I use Uploader. Uploader is very old, but still works for my end. Um, I use AWS S3. So what I do is when you attach a photo, um, the system uploads it to AWS and stop. Rescue will take care of the processing. The processing means you create your thumbnails, your other sizes. So what you do is you only push the original image, then stop the process, delegate it to Rescue, and let Rescue do the work for you. So good, yeah. And cocaine is for paperclip. Uh, sanitize is you, if you want to get rid of the HTML tags in your. Alibo may kung ka form ka tapos merong Chinese spammer naglagay ng mga bullshit sa doon tapos sinabit sa yung pumasok sa yung tapos ka. You use sanitize to get rid of those HTML tags. And I use Active Admin for the CMS. Can can for from Ryan Bates. CK Editor for the for the Visui. Kaminari for pagination, the captcha for the captcha, humanizer, friendly ID for beautiful URLs, access list, commentable, and my own branch of access messageable. So, prang tanda na niyan. Um, I use memcacheer, which is free on Heroku, 25 MP. Woo. I use Dali to manage uh, memcache, and I like the for the payment facility. I'm integrating with um, uh, uh, Payment Gateway in Australia for this. JBuilder for the JSON responses. Version King, hindi ko pa nagamit. Sorry. Yun. Sa rock block naman, yung mga Chinese spammers, of course. You've got to love them. Sidepub generator for SEO stuff, yeah, you need this. So, if you push mo sa AWS yung sitemaps mo, you have a rate that daily generates this. And you hook it to, to Google for, for SEO stuff and that's it. Uh, you need carrier wave and fog 
para kasi si Heroku if you use it Heroku ikaw pwedeng maglagay ng ng dynamic uh, files doon so that ay ay kusha using farm to push it to AWS so para dinaya niya yung application mo na nilagay niya sa local pero yun pala binato niya kay S3 and meta tags yung sinabi ni Ryan ni Brian kanina so impression is for impressions impression is is for let's say you want to count how many loads ang ginawa doon sa page na yun for counters and stuff. And active UUID, I'm not using the primary key, the incremental ID. I'm using the UUID. Why? Because later on, the client perceived that we will be creating multiple databases. So creating a, an incremental ID will not be, uh, I think, sufficient for our foreseeable future. Kasi baka mamaya, what we're doing is, we have a couple of databases and we want to merge them down. If you're using UUID, wala kang problema regarding ID conflicts because UUID is almost unique that UUID tools. So these are the stuff that I use. I don't know if you got anything, but most of the stuff that you will be using for your own application might also be among, among, among these gems. So that's the first thing that you're gonna do if you want to learn more about Ruby and Rails. And moving forward, Another issue that I want to raise is, okay, 10 minutes. When it comes to collaboration, um, alibaba, sa inyo, let's say you're a team, and you wanted to, to, to create an application, or if, either if, if it's for thesis or something. Para sa akin, I've, I've worked with the worst environment so far. Kasi right now, I'm working with a, with a company, na yung isang developer is nasa Ukraine, yung isa is nasa Brazil, ako nasa Manila, client namin sa Australia. So, those different time zones and the collaboration, the, the application, kahit saan namin ilagay, wherever we put the application, either it be on a Windows machine, on a Linux machine, or on a Mac machine, it will work. So, the first thing you gotta do is we, 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 we summarize that we need to use RPM. Using RPM, at least, we, we can set a specific gem set that this application only use this specific gem set. So whatever you're using for the big say bug application mo, your specific application doesn't care. Okay, it, it uses it exclusively. There are other approach, I guess. You can create your own art, uh, virtual machine and handle lang yung application mo. But that's a lot of, a lot of uh, space, I guess. In terms of collaboration, the first thing you gotta learn as well is you have to know version control. Now, if you don't have a Git account yet, you have to get now. It is not an optional thing, it is mandatory. Okay, it's a mandatory. If you want to move on with Rails, get a GitHub account or get to know how to use Git. If somebody else is using SVN or the Epic CVS by own? CVS. CSC by own? CBS. SBN, CBS, 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 so it's like 2000, like 2003, 2004, that's, that's very epic, but unless, I don't think anybody's using it, so uh, just to leverage, get a GitHub account and get to know how to use Git, because one, not unless you're only creating an application by yourself, you're good. But if you're collaborating with other developers, especially from different time zones, you gotta know how to use it. You gotta know when to pull, how to create branches, how to merge your branches. Kasi baka mamaya, gawa ka ng gawa sa master ka pala. Tapos, okay, so that's, that's very critical. Especially for, for businesses. Pag nakita nilang ginawa mo yun, isang push mo pa lang, at tawagan ka na, hey dude, pack your bags, tell me how many hours you spent. I'll give it to you now, get the shit out of my face. Ganun lang yun. They don't have time for that. Uh, Rails is very agile. Rails is very fast. That those kind of fuck-ups doesn't really count. Okay, so if you want to know how to work with teams, get to know version control and get to know game. The second part is, you want to get your, so you push something in, in production. Let's say I'm in Iru, okay? Nanda na siya lahat. Um, there are developers, especially pag nagsisimula pa lang what you get to do is, you, right now we, 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 we use SQLite, but if you would ask me, 
if you're pushing this to Heroku, never use SQLite in your development environment. Because you're pushing to Heroku and you're probably using Postgre, then create Postgre. Install Postgre on your system. I know it's a big headache, but you have to go through that. Why? You have to simulate your development environment as near as possible to your to your production environment. There are cases na production environment ko is my SQL version 3. Point blah 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 and my local version is 2. Point blah blah blah. The client said, dude, there's an error. I don't see anything. Yes, there is. Ang problema sa version. So whatever version you have in your production, make sure that you also have the same version locally. Even the single version issues might cause you a lot of problem. That's the first. So, why are you going to use Windows? Use a VMware, for God's bloody sake. I don't know, pero kung pwede lang naman, di ba? If you're pushing it to, 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 to production, you know that it's a mixed environment. You can't really make it that fly as good. I'm not saying na hindi pwede gamitin ng Windows or Rails. Yes, you could, eventually. But as soon as things get more complicated, you will find yourself na, why the fuck am I fixing the OS? Why the fuck am I fixing the installations? But dapat, I'm concentrating more on delivering the code and making things work. Those are the things that we say in project management na tools or, or very calculated uh, events or pagkakataon na pwede mong tanggalin. Halimbawa, sabi ng girlfriend mo, bakit hindi mo ako tinex? Kasi wala akong load. That's a very lame excuse, dude. Di ba? Sino ba naman? Eh, di bumili ka ng load, tapos yun. Kasi wala akong pera. It's a very anticipated approach. Not unless, tinamaan ako ng kotse, bigla na lang ako binugbog, pwede pa. Pero wala akong load, hindi ka nag-text. That's unacceptable. The same thing with us. Why am I saying this? Because Rails environment, our environment is very active. That we somehow had a low tolerance of simple stuff should be dealt with simply and should be mandatory. So I guess that's one thing also that you need to you need to to put into your soul for the things are is. Okay, that's those are my notes. And yeah, let's go back to the proper presentation proper. Okay, I'll make this very fast. I only have para nando na screen belt yung magina ko. <clears throat> Ideal software development process. Now, uh, Terence asked me, dude, wala pa tayong SD talk about SDLC. Okay, the research to SDLC. Way back in college, my beauty, hindi ako computer science. Hindi ako civil engineering, uh, computer engineering. I was civil engineering graduate, so I don't know what the fuck this is. Frankly, I don't. Wala akong alam doon. So, pinapagawa ako ng mga thesis eh. That's how I survived college. Ako yung gumagawa ng mga thesis ng mga kaupsay at saka ng mga CE, mga, CE, mga computer engineer. That's why uh, I, I get to, to learn this. Now we all know software development life cycle. You know that you have to gather requirements, you have to do the construction, you have to design, you have to build it and everything. But <clears throat> my talk today will be more about the, the methods. There are a lot of methods. I don't know if you still use waterfall method, but maraming cash yung dumating sa akin nung dahil sa waterfall method. I was virtually copying chapter 2 of every thesis. One thesis to another. Because the waterfall method was very fixed. Ganun lang nadali yun. Then came in the agile um, development process. Now, why do I have to discuss agile instead, instead of the waterfall method? We are, we are learning rails. I say, agility is part of the fabric of Rails, essentially. What you did ngayong umaga is ilang lines of codes pa lang yan. Because you're just beginning. But once you, you get the hang of it, it's very fast. Okay, your boss tells you na, gawa ka ng, gawa ka ng FAQ. Um, ang field ng F FAQ is questions and answers. All you need to do is Rails generate model, FAQ, type uh, question, text, Answer text, tapos, take it by way, tapos, then code it, if you know crap. Ang hindi pa tinuro sa inyo ni Brian Perry na yung scaffold. 
Kung tinuro kayo na yung scaffold, doon lahat na pinag-aralan nyo simula kayo na umaga hanggang ngayon, tapos na sana yun. Kasi nandun na sa scaffold yung lahat ng gagawin yung code. So, ganun siya katali. That's the reason why we wanted to emphasize on the Agile methodology and style. What are the core values? Uh, when we're talking about the Agile methods, we will always go back to the Agile Manifesto. We don't have time to discuss about this, but these are the core values of the Agile Manifesto. Individuals and interactions over process and tools. Why? The individuals are composed of the developers themselves. They talk. Actually, if you look at the Agile process, in the Agile team, in the team itself, a customer is always part of the, of, of the process itself. So what happens is, if I'm the developer and I have a question about a feature, I don't talk to my technical lead, then talk to my team lead, then talk to my project manager, and to the account manager maybe, then he talks to the client and clarifies if there's a typo. No, we directly talk to the clients. Like myself, I'm working for a company, I'm not re reporting to somebody with lower than the CEO. I'm directly reporting to the CEO. So whatever feature he needs, ang gagawin niya lang sa akin is a couple of paragraphs. Let's say I'm a user, I want to do this, blah, 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 email to someone, and that's it. There's no documentation. All you need to do is send it back to me. That is the, 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 the idea, one, one, one core value of the idea of manifesto. Being individual can interact as, as fast as possible. If you can, the last resort that we do is email. <clears throat> the first thing that you do is Skype. If they don't respond to Skype, text. If they don't respond to text. Call. If it's that immediate, then get the immediate answer. That's how you do it. I mean, say, by siguro, in the process, they would think, okay, we'll get back to you next week. No, that's bullshit. But that takes three to develop and fix. Kahit sabihin mo sa akin ngayon, if you tell me now what to do, I can do it, and I can fix it now. That's it. So, working software over comprehensive documentation. I started the, the form tender application out of virtually none. My client only gave me a two-page paper, which was not actually printed, two-page document, stating everything that, that he wants, and that's it. No design, no framework, no ERD, no field definitions. Wala. Nung I, start, I started working, start showing him piece by piece. No, I want this, I want that. Then we started revising. So, that's we don't rely much on documentation. If you're, if you're in an enterprise environment, I guess, before you even start coding, you have the full document. That you, have. you have a data dictionary, you have a documentation of all the changes that have been done and everything, so that's the stuff that we're different uh, with. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation. Why? Because, okay, let's say your client wanted you to create an FAQ page, and he wanted an, uh, a question field and an answer field, and that's it. You can manage it, you can add, you can edit, you can delete, you display the FAQs, then suddenly your client told you that, dude, I want the FAQs to be categorized. What the fuck? Categorized, okay, so what do you do? do you, you, you don't file a change request, no. You just do it, because it's easy to fix. All you need to do is create a category or maybe a a collection of categories, put an additional field on it, adjust the form, fix the listing. You can do it in, in an hour or even less, and that's it. You don't need to go back to your contract, hey dude, category source was never mentioned in my contract of our list of work. No. Why? Because we can do it as fast as we could. Good. That's the agile uh, stuff. Responding to change over following a plan. That's, that's how we do it. Um, as I told you, I started that big application out of a two-page document, and that's it. It started growing. We never planned long-term. Uh, my boss told me that I need to integrate with zero accounting. Okay, when? Uh, maybe soon. We never, if, if you watch it now, okay, I'll go working with it. I'll go working and, and start coding it, and that's it. So kind of, we, we start things piece by piece. 
Because hindi ka makakapag-concentrate. You can't concentrate on anything that you can do if you if you think a lot about everything else. If you're working on the FAQ, work on the FAQ. Once you're done, load it and that's it. Okay, what's next? Then in that. Good. The, the very, one of the very essence of, of Agile is this. Deliver something of value. Well, the every week is, is um, pwede yung palitan niya. Sa iba, if you have sprints of two weeks. So that's how you actually do it if you want to build the site. You chop things down into several pieces. Ganun lang yun. But, hindi ka tulad lang na, like the ordinary development process, like the waterfall method, you have to go through the whole process, then deliver. Pagdating ng thesis, may defense, di ba? Thesis defense. Mali yung application mo, mali yung program mo, kasi waterfall yung sinundan mo. I don't know if that is instituted to most schools right now, that they need to go with this approach as well. Para puro ang laging yung residente. This is the same way that we do professionally. We chop things down. So ibig sabihin nun, if you're done with the legal page, load it, show it to your client. If you're done with the FAQ page, load it, show it. If you need to buy one or you need to change something, then change something. If you need to use the blog now, load it and show it. As soon as matapos mo lahat siya, mas magandang you display it piece by piece and fix the, the, the smaller ones as it arrives. Rather than wait for it, wait for it, and here it goes. Dude, you have like 50 items to fix. So, this is how we do it as well. This is how we do it instead. So, so you break you break the big problems down into smaller ones. You focus on the reality of stop and forget everything else. And you make sure that you are delivering your work and you become accountable for it. And yeah, these are the three simple truths that all of you must confess to agree and accept and pledge. And you slash a race. Three simple truths. It is impossible to gather all the requirements at the beginning of a project. Who can discount this? I haven't worked, I've been a developer for more than a decade. Not a single project that I've worked with. Actually, this will be the simple truth. Whatever requirements you do gather are guaranteed to change. Good idea. It always changes. It always changes and essentially changes. Even though you're in the maintenance mode, your client will still ask you to please change this. So even though it's done, it's in deeper. There will always be more to do than time and money will allow. If you accept these three truths <coughs> as the pragmatic uh, group uh, wanted you to do, this is like an acceptance for a stress free developer life. So if it's a bit, if this is the truth, then if you accept it, then I think, okay, begin you know and that's it. If you approach a project and, and you know that this truth will happen, then I don't think you will have a problem after all. So yeah. So the basic characteristics of uh, an agile uh, software method is it breaks tasks into simple increments. Take out of the increments. The reason why I'm saying increments is you load and show it with minimal planning and do not directly involve long-term planning. So you chop things down. If you're working on the FAQ, work on the FAQ, and if it's done, show it. The ideal team will contain a customer representative, lagging my own. Because you have to interact with the customer directly because you want to get the feedback as soon as possible. Daily status meetings or stand-ups, this is literally stand-ups because we do it standing up. Information radiator with up-to-date summary status. Um, yeah, it's a big board, board with sticky sign. So there are different agile methods. Actually, so programming there are more. Um, there is extreme programming and Kanban. There's also Scrum. There's also Scrum Kanban. There are hybrids mixing everything up together. So there are a lot of agile methods. What I'll do is I'll discuss Scrum, which is one of the most widely used and adopted by uh, a lot of development uh, dev companies. 
the scrubs. So scrub is a flexible ballistic. They call it the ballistic. It's flexible because um, your sprint might contain different uh, story sets. Holistic because you're looking at the whole picture itself. A uh, strategy where a development team works as a unit to reach a common goal as opposed to a traditional sequential approach. So a lot of people are saying that this will only happen if you're co-located. What do you mean by co-located is all of the developers are in the, in the same office. But I work with a lot of companies where they were very much not in the same office. Um, I was with Exist, and one of a group of team was in Cebu. We were in Manila, and there was another team in the US. So, but we're using Scrum to, 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 to do the job. So that's the, the usual workflow. You have a product backlog. <coughs> Those are terms. Um, you don't really need to memorize it. Sprint backlog, and you have a sprint. 30 days is very long, and you have the 24 hours that's for the daily stand-up meetings and the working increment of the software. This is how it would actually look. Uh, the project starts, we go through iterations, um, because a lot of development uh, groups had enough of Scrum already. They changed the iteration names into, instead of one, two, and three, to Alpha, Beta, Charlie, Beta. Some groups even named the iterations by their girlfriend's name, or by friend's name. So iteration Anna, iteration David. So yeah, just to remind them, or just to make things a little bit different. So each iteration, that's the detail of the iteration. You implement uh, in developer implementation and developer testing, QA. Now it exists, we have a separate QA. So in a team, possibly there is a QA as well. Then the deployment, evaluation, prioritization, you de detail the requirements, design and analysis. So that's the usual loop within each iteration until you you, 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 you finish the product. So um, in Scrum, there are there are some simple structures that are that, that are implied. So actually Scrum is just a framework, so it's not a it's not a process that you need to follow. So some Scrum dev teams have different ways of implementing it. So it's like a growing and, and it's very flexible that you can actually modify it and not follow it word by word. So there are roles, meetings, and rules and artifacts in Scrum. So we can just go through it um, very fast. Scrum roles: the product owner. This is usually the Maybe your client. So if you if you look at Scrum roles, then you see product owner, Scrum dev team, and Scrum master. The, the basic, the usual question that gets asked is, where's the project manager in there? And where's the team lead in there? Okay, so take note that Scrum is just a frame, framework. It's, you can, companies can modify things and put project manager uh, in, within the process as well. Okay, you know, like it, okay so in Scrum we don't need project managers anymore. No, I'm not saying that you don't need them anymore. In your company, you might need them. So you, you have to put them in, whatever uh, role you want to put them into. So the product owner is the single responsible for the return of investments of the product development effort. The Scrum dev team are the ninjas, and the Scrum master is the master of the ninjas. Oh, actually, the Scrum Master manages the, the team. Oops. Uh, no, no, no. The, the Scrum Master manages the team. The Scrum Master actually shields the team from the management uh, crafts or politics or something. Mind you, there is a Scrum Master certification course, I think, for three days. 40,000? 50? <laughs> so, and, so this is just a very brief run through. If you want to know more about Scrum, you have 50,000 pesos. Look around or get a book. Go to YouTube. Learn. So these are the Scrum meetings. The usual Scrum meetings is the sprint planning meeting, the daily Scrum, the sprint review meeting, the sprint retrospective meeting, 
and sometimes we do the backlog to find them, not scheduled every now and then. The sprint planning happens is, what happens is, uh, the first part is the, the product owner tells the, the, the team that, hey dude, these are the things that you need to work on. Okay, the second part of the sprint planning is the team gets to decide which they work on. Okay, so kung si product owner gave you task one, two, and three, can the team decide not to work on task three? Yes, pwede yun. Pero baka i-five ka. So, pwede ko rin na lang. So, it, so, it's very flexible. Sometimes, the dev team can tell the product owner, dude, we can't do that now. I think we need to do this one first and do this. So this, there is constant uh, interaction. So what happens in the sprint planning meeting is, what we do is we have um, um, scorecards. The scorecards will tell you, let's say for example, for, for, for backlog item one or sprint task one, everybody gets to read <coughs> how many story points that is. So sometimes the, the, the product owner will, will actually designate the number of story points for it. What are story points? Story points are like uh, values for how difficult the task is. So each Alibaba um, create a FAQ page and its management, that may be uh, two story points. Two story points may be equivalent to two days or one day. It depends on how you implement it. So depending on the team, they can actually formulate the convention. Some teams have one story point as like one hour. Two story points is four hours. On different teams, they might have different conventions. So you can implement your own uh, conventions. It's related to the product owner as well. So once the team decided that, okay, these are the tasks that we need to work on, this is the story points, and this is the these are the people who will be working on it, and they do. They start working on the daily scrum. On the daily scrum, this happens every day at the same time at the same place, and they do it standing up for 15 minutes only. It's very strict. So, what happens is it's very funny. I say one, the scrum meeting is usually we do it in a circular position or fashion. All of the developers are standing up and facing each other. We report to the development team. We are not actually reporting to the project manager or to the boss. You're reporting to the team. Why? Uh, there are reasons, there are occasions that you might be working on a specific task that had been worked on by somebody else. And what you're going to say is, I've been working on this one yesterday. I've been working on this one today. And I think I have a problem on this. If one of the developers might know the answer to your, to your problem, then you can interact with you uh, as fast as you could. But anything more than the discussion, and you can start talking about it outside of the daily scrum. So this, this is the team getting the feel out of everybody, where they're working on, where they, they worked at, and what are they working on, and what are impediments to them. So that's the daily scrum's purpose. On the sprint review meeting, as soon as you're done, if you push it to some branch, then you merge it to staging, then you deploy it, then you show it to the product owner. Then the product owner says that, okay, task one is done, task two is done, task three is done, there's about the task four, go and put it back, then ibabalik natin yun. If kaya taposin within that sprint, then if it's too big, it will be a GBI or something else. Okay, so the, the the, the loop continues. The loop continues. As soon as matapos niyo yung isang iteration, you deploy it, you launch it, you get another set of things to be done. Then lang nag work in Scrum. So, we have these artifacts. So, kanina, baka hindi niyo pag-visually nakikita kung ano yung sinasabi ko. The, the product backlog is actually a set of product backlog items. Those items are big features that the client wants. They are arranged by priority, so high priority, the lower. So sometimes the product owner can actually set a release backlog um, limit. Done. So if those four are for sprint one, those remaining five backlog items might be for the next sprint. So after the next sprint, we will have a release. So we chop things down into those pieces. So the, the, 
this is monitored by the product owner and is regularly managed by the product owner. The, the dev team also looks and, and sees how, how this is progressing. So the product backlog item, so you can some product backlog item, they can be split into different sprint tasks. So sometimes one sprint, you might be working on one product item only. Sometimes you might be working on three product backlog items. It's flexible, okay, it, it varies. Sometimes if the product backlog is too big, we call it epic, you chop things down to smaller pieces. And it, for each product backlog item, you know, okay, the sprint tasks. The sprint task is what you work on on a specific sprint. So usually we, we put them on. Yeah, yeah. I don't know kung sa ano yun. Sino yung sa so so part ko ni fashion na siya na may malaking hero hero. The apparel hero. I don't know if you've been to apparel hero. They have this very big um, board with a lot of sticky notes on it. That's how they, they usually manage it. So, so everybody having a cup of coffee, you look at the, okay, where we at? It takes a lot of things on the to-do, and they're in the middle of the sprint. You instantly see something that, that there's something wrong happening here. It might be, baka lahat ng developers as a or something, but yeah, there's got to be something wrong with that. So it has to be moving. So for the to-do list, you move into the in-progress stuff, and if it's going through testing, and if it's ready for release, so that's how it goes. You just move it back in. I don't know if the the situation, but the in progress went back to what to do. Maybe if you have to work on some other project tasks. Sometimes. Sometimes. When, when the team also happens to be the one fixing production bugs. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that sucks. That needs some, some time as well. Yeah. yeah, but anyway, this is not a, a monotonous discussion. I, uh, I actually told Mr. to actually voice out if you if you think you can squeeze in some information to, to the discussion, please just stand up and say. So yeah, this is the basic sprint backlog. And you should see that on, on, on big uh, development shops. The sprint tasks. And the sprint burnout chart that should be going down yeah, eventually. And the sprint task specifies the how. Usually, um, this is the, the the chop part of the the, the product backlog item. Usually, when you go to an agile team, they would always have this term PBI uh, backlog product backlog. So, what can you most shock at the Those those are just terms that they use. For, for, for this method. The sprint burnout chart, um, yeah, this is like the list of, um, this, this is usually in hours, so the number of hours that, that are remaining for the specific number of tasks for the, for the duration of the sprint. Product release burnout chart. tracks the remaining product backlog effort from one sprint to the next and may use units like story points etc. So I have no sample for the product release burnout chart but these are the artifacts that you can see for all of the, all of the scrum methods um, out there that are used by some web shops. So yeah, that's just a very fast run through of the Agile Scrum methodology. If you want to learn more um, pragmatic bookshop have a lot of ebooks <coughs> you can download, uh, you can buy and learn. So for most of the dev shops, so I, the reason why I, I discuss this is if some of you will go into a Rails gig, you might end up with a team using this. So at least, okay, I know what to do, man. They just stand up, so I'm good. Okay, so good enough, just a brief, but, but this is like a whole course as well. So we can't squeeze in everything for in, in one day. So yeah, so what's next? From my end, these are my personal recommendations. If you want to move on to Rails. So now Brian, Brian, please learn Ruby. If you don't know Ruby, you've been using it. 
when you were in using Linux. So also, if you want to prefigure your ERB, use Hamel. For I guess for three years now, I have been using Hamel, and this has been a growing pattern for some the groups and developers still use ERB over Hamel. From my end, I don't care if the page renders. 0 0.05 seconds slower than the ERB. <laughs> but yeah, Hamel will make your life easier. Um, in the ERB side, uh, GitHub page, uh, yeah, or in ERB, github.com slash page. So, what is it? Yeah, oh. yeah so this is how Hamel looks like. There's no, there's no HTML on that. So if you want to use, uh, if you want it to be an ID as a found uh, symbol, if you want to use classes, documentation. So, but if you're starting with web design, if you're just starting with web design, I don't advise you to do this. So, you're trying to create a website, so you don't want to use HTML tags. So make sure that you know what you're doing. What that actually uh, tells you is um, create a div with an ID of main content and the classes of 13 and columns. Within that, create a div with page content ID, full width, white background, and left. Left is a class in your CSS. So all of these are CSS IDs and CSS classes. So get in the so yeah, gagawa ko ng div, button group, wala and div. It makes your code easier to read kasi pag nabali yung indention mo, that will cause an error. And with ERB, you can, you can plug it lahat, left align, or kahit saan nakatapot, it will still render good. But for me, I wanted to discipline myself and use this instead. Okay, you can use Hamel if you want it. The next one is, Try using try using SAS instead of the usual CSS. I think uh, if you use SAS Rails, try to use SAS Rails. That will make your CSS life easier as well, especially for designers. You will, there's an alternative, less. So the less and SAS button also is another forum. A lot of developers have been killing themselves about that issue. So I don't want to compromise anymore. I just use SAS. <laughs> why do why gumagamit ng less? Because I don't like less to give the burden to my client. That's it. Because less is processed with the client browser. It's an English. So with SAS. And use CopyScript. I'm beginning to love CopyScript because I'm forced to love CopyScript, <laughs> but there is another, there's a quick uh, trick that you can use, there is the js to copy that word. You know shit, pare. What I do is code shit in that js, fuck, they want to be copy. Copy and paste it, copy and paste it. Copy, man. <laughs> so, parang, dinadaya ko yung sarili ko na, then I realized, what the fuck am I doing? Dapat, inaaral ko na talaga ang copy script after then doing this JS to copy shit. So, I'm beginning to love it. And I think you will love it too. It will make your life easier. And, mind you, please join the local health communities. We are on Facebook, we are on Google, we are on meetup groups. There's a lot of groups on Facebook. Just don't post crappy and nonsense questions because you will be bad and kicked out. Yeah, 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 participate. We have Manila JS, we have Prod, we have the Philippine Web Designers. So if you're into JS, join Manila JS, or Philippine JS group. If you want to continue with, with Rails, please join Prod, Facebook group, and DevCon, follow, follow everyone on Twitter, so you can get because it means that there's a lot of people saying, what the fuck, there's no event here in Manila. <laughs> it's been a whole week. We had a lot of events for the whole week. So
So some people are just not informed. If you want to get in touch with us, yeah. join these groups, uh, post anything, even tolerable stupid questions will do. But yeah, low tolerance, just keep in mind that kind of stuff. If you can't Google it, ask it. But if you can Google it, do it, don't you ever try. Yeah, then you can die. Just to say, please use Google. Google is your friend. Asking questions, talk overflow with your friend as well. Third, always use the API. If you don't understand uh, a helper, a command, a syntax, go to the API and learn it. So it's that easy. For the reference, sashimi is done. References, uh, we love Wikipedia and some rep cards, uh, programming bookshelf, and some stuff. Yeah, so two minutes back. Any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, do you train people in agile? There is a there is a training actually. There is a certification. Yeah, um, I'm interested. Uh, does it include the training include the certificate afterwards? Yeah, you will be called a scrum master. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the master. <laughs> no, 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 no. Which which was it? Uh, what, what I just see Mike, right? Yeah, but so Michael Marin, uh, we had in the we that the at the point as two weeks ago we had the Scrum camp, uh, pro, pro, uh, project, project management, management camp. So we had Ben C, Ben Lars. We also have our regular in the quality. He's around. Michael Marin is also a, a certified Scrum. Uh, master. So if you have any questions about the certification process, if he's outside, you can ask him questions there, about that. There is, there is a certification. But what, what do you recommend? What company? What certifications from Alliance? Uh, from Alliance, from Alliance. 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 I think there's only one, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I just couldn't afford it because it's too expensive. Let's take it for free. But yes. They've been around. I think they also have... Yeah. No, but I guess this one, they, they really give a certificate that uh, you, you finish the course and you're so, so in, in other questions? Yeah, the discipline very brief, so we only have one day. We have like a rail scam for one week. We can go through testing. I think Brian will be happy enough to guide you from the unit test. That stuff, copy and so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm done for my, my talk, it's very neat. That's it. Thank you.